Allora, ci siamo. Accomodatevi, allacciate le cinture di sicurezza, che si parte con questo talk di eh, Pedro, che ringrazio nuovamente. Thank you for staying here today. <ride> Grazie. Allora, è fondamentale comprendere come funziona Open Upgrade. Io ve lo dico in italiano, poi tanto lui parla bene in inglese, e io non... Già salì dal bit. No, no, no che è, è un sistema utile alla migrazione di versione di Odoo da una release all'altra, con cui, insomma, grazie alla Odoo Community Association, noi abbiamo questa possibilità per le istanze di Odoo interamente community. Uh, però adesso non rubo altro spazio a, a Pedro e ti lascio la parola. Buon, buon lavoro. Hello everyone. I think it's not the, the best time, so uh, not the best time for a technical talk or anything at all, but I will try to be the, most interest, uh, the more interesting possible because it's, uh, this is quite technical. And for not losing the habit, uh, this talk is less controversial, but let's uh, start with something that It's a bit <laughs> controversial. This is a statement from a Free Software Foundation, talking specifically about Odoo, and uh, stating that being trapped in a previous version is not open source at all or free software at all. So the, the way to avoid this in the community has been open upgrade. It's an initiative started uh, in uh, I think in, in, 12, in 2012, uh, by Stefan Reinhardt and continued by other contributors that I, I'm right now part of this project. We are talking about project because it's composed by several tools, uh, uh, libraries and so on. And we are going to, uh, uh, to try to explain all of them for, for you to, to have an overview of this, uh, of, of this system. So, first of all, um, I, I want to, um, um, to, uh, to do this question about why upgrades are needed. Uh, this is something that people can wonder, uh, saying um, if I'm in one version, the, the next version has some uh, announcement, but why do I have to perform a migration? And first of all, This is not a conspiracy by Odoo SA. <laughs> Someone, uh, some people have said, hey, it's a way to make you pay or, or something. No, this is uh, something derived from the adaptation of the data structures and so on. So um, it's, uh, there is another rule uh, here that if you want to innovate, you, uh, you have to break some things. For, for doing this in, uh, innovation. So the migration is the consequence of these breaking things. You need to adapt the things. Uh, it can be hard to, uh, to uh, do a say some, uh, sometimes for not having enough uh, provision for this data model. So they are changing uh, across version until they fine tune it. But it's also true that it's not easy sometimes to, to derive this, uh, this archi uh, architecture. Uh, so basically, migrate is to adapt the data structure to the new expected business flows and new behaviors. And the goal of this migration is to continue working as is seamlessly, without having to do anything, and preserving uh, most of the times the same behavior you have previously. As said, uh, there can be something that can be uh, to, to a due essay, but this is only a bit run for, from my part, because I have to deal with uh, this, uh, this kind of things uh, when doing the, the migration scripts, uh, scripts, is that they don't always implement the full feature. So uh, they put on one version half of the feature and on the next version the, uh, the rest of the feature. But meanwhile, you have to deal with this half of feature, uh, of feature implemented. Example, uh, 
two or three versions ago, uh, they implemented the, the reversals of the journal entries. And doing the reversal, they, they only provide a text saying this is the reversal of this move, but not having a direct link, what is called a many to one field, to the source journal entry. Now, this has been uh, uh, added, but you have to continue the flow and the, try to deduce from the already reverse entries, which is their original journal uh, entry that generates them. So you can imagine the problem there. Uh, we have tried to do um, an heuristic uh, matching by, the, by this uh, string, saying if you put reversal of, then uh, look for the number of the journal entry in that text. But you have the problem of multilanguage, not, uh, it's not always reversal of, maybe it's a reverso de, in other idioma, in other language. So uh, you can imagine. So this is a, a bit uh, of run by my part, but the rest is uh, natural and you, you have to deal with these data structure uh, changes. So, uh, before starting with Open Upgrade itself, let's talk about the Odoo update machinery. What is this? This is not something that we have made on the community, but uh, something from Odoo. And it's the way Odoo has to deal with the changes on your models. For example, you are, uh, uh, you are developing a module, you are a field, and you have to make an update of the module that is on the command line uh, slash slash, uh, slash no, um, dash dash update and the name of the module or via user interface clicking on upgrade on the module list. So this update machinery is integrated on all the versions of Odoo and allow to reflect on the uh, database the changes you are doing on your modules, on your code. Um, as said, this is triggered on that, uh, on that moment. And if you need to, to update a module and this module has several dependencies, these modules, uh, these dependent modules will be also updated. This is very important because everything on the migration, being the Odoo SA Enterprise One or the Community One, relies on these first uh, mechanisms for having the, the new structures. The second machinery that is uh, also used by both uh, systems is the Odoo migration machinery. This is also integrated in Odoo itself in, in the core. And what uh, does uh, this, uh, what this uh, does? Um, uh, let me uh, put that, that's it. When we are changing explicitly the version number in our module manifest, we can execute some code uh, that we see later the, uh, the structure for doing several things. And in these things, usually there are changes on the database, but we can trigger that uh, there what we want to do. So this is the base for triggering the migrations, the code we are doing for transforming and adapting things. More thing about this, yeah. For uh, using this machinery, we need to have this structure. Uh, first, a migrations folder inside the module. Then we put uh, one folder per version where we want to trigger the, uh, the code. So, for example, Coming from a version uh, 13, we have to put the 14.0.1, uh, etc. That's the target version we are migrating to. Then uh, we put several files inside this folder. We have mm, two folder migration inside the number of version, and then inside uh, we can have up to three type of files. Those uh, prefix with the pre uh, dash um, um, file name, which is code that is going to be executed uh, to be executed before updating the module without 
uh, before the, um, the update machinery is run for changing things. So this is very important to, uh, for changes we have to do before the rest of the changes are, are done. So this is very usual uh, to, uh, to have scripts uh, running here. The next one is the post uh, dash uh, files uh, ring, uh, name with, uh, with this name. So as you can imagine, this is run after the update of the module itself. So this is for adjustment on a post phase. And finally, we have those prefix with n. This is something that happens and it's executed when you uh, have already updated all the modules and you want to, to do something for completion. Uh, and when you have everything loaded and those act in, uh, in consequence. So with this base uh, system, uh, we have made all the open upgrade thing. So let's start with um, basically what is open upgrade project. It's a collection of tools, patches, scripts, and the main goal of this is to, uh, to migrate uh, one from one major version to another. Another thing that I have to say about this is that this migration machinery can be used inside the same, same version. You don't need to, uh, to jump across major versions for using it. You only have to bump the manifest version and put a folder with that uh, uh, version in, in the name. So this will be a trigger. Let's start with the tools. One of the tools we are uh, using on the Open Upgrade project is the Open Upgrade Analysis uh, mo uh, module. Well, mm, this has been uh, this has been renamed lately uh, only Upgrade Analysis. So mm, remove the, the the open the initial open, and uh, it was called Open Upgrade Records before uh, version 14. And as said, it's an audio. Uh, it's an Odoo module and it's hosted at, at that uh, URL in GitHub, the server tools repository, which is uh, what is uh, its aim. The, uh, this is installed on both databases that we want to compare, the previous version database and the next version database, and an analysis is performed between them. Uh, communicating via RPC with a library called Odoo RPC and it produces these files famous for those that <laughs> works on this uh, upgrade analysis and this file contains all the database differences that has been detected so this serves as a base for knowing which things have changed uh, how it works, uh, as said, uh, you install on of both versions, you have to, uh, to uh, take both of the versions running and compare that. And this is an example of the file, obviously a very a small example, but you can see that on, uh, on the model account uh, dot account uh, there is a new, uh, a new order for that model, there is also a new uh, field that is called allow journal IDs, there is also uh, the, the field group ID has changed to be a function, a compute uh, field and so on. So this is a uh, uh, a uh, methodology, um, I don't get the, the, the word. Uh, this is uh, a method for getting all the possible things you have to do on your migration scripts, on, on the code you want to run. More things, uh, as another tool, we have Open Upgrade Lead. This is a Python library that is also hosted on OCA repositories, in this case it has its own repository, and this is a set of, uh, let me see at the beginning, for being, ah, okay, uh, this is only a bit of, of history, um, this was at, at the beginning pack everything together, but it was useful to extract them for being used in any part, for example I, uh, in these in-between migrations, so it was extracted as a library and it's a set 
of uh, methods that helps you on the migration for not having to, to write uh, complicated SQLs and so on. And at the end, there are common uh, things that you have to do across each module. For example, renaming fields, there's a field that is called one way with one name, and on the next version, there is another name for that field. So this method uh, takes care of modifying the SQL column and make another changes, like for example, if you put that field on a filter or on an export profile. So uh, only calling this uh, uh, makes very easy to perform that, uh, that task. Another one is uh, something that is a many to one because at the beginning uh, Odoo thinks that only one field is needed and now uh, we have several, uh, several possible values. We have an example with version 15 uh, on the task that at the beginning you, you can only assign to one person the task and now you can assign several persons. So in the database you have to perform this modification for adapting the, uh, the already existing assigned persons to this new field. And another one that uh, I'm very proud of because I'm the, the author of this is a merge machinery, uh, also a, a, mer a merge method for uh, merging several records into one having options for defining how this merge is performed, summing values or taking the, the last one, the first one, and so on. This, for example, was used uh, for merging ones from version uh, 10 to version 11, because uh, in previous version to prior to, to version 11, uh, we have ones fragmented for the same location, product, and so on. But on version 11, not changing database structure itself, but the one uh, passes to, to be uh, the, the only uh, re one only record for each uh, position of of a stock for the product and so on. So we, we needed to perform this merge of all the ones belonging to the same product, lot, uh, location, and so on. There are a lot of more. These are only examples as illustration, but you can go there and see what are the methods uh, you have. More things. Now let's go to the patches. Uh, this is on version 14 is called Open Upgrade Framework, and it's also an Odoo module. It's uh, packed as uh, it's bundled as an Odoo module. And what is the aim of this? Well, uh, we have to say that previous to version 14, this was a merge on the Odoo code uh, itself that we copy. We copy full uh, Odoo code and patch inside the things we we needed. And uh, now it's bundled as a module, and it's a module you have to uh, load as server-wide modules. What is this? A server-wide module is a module that is loaded before loading any database, and it's a mechanism that Odoo has for uh, several things that needs to be preloaded. So this is the case. It's hosted uh, there on the Open Upgrade project but on a folder inside this project. So what is, uh, what is the aim of this? Well, uh, we have to patch the way Odoo works on the update machinery and the migration machinery for being uh, more helpful for uh, this uh, major version uh, migrations. Uh, for example, we don't drop any column at the DB. If a field has disappeared, uh, the, um, the regular update mechanism drop this column from, uh, from the database. And we don't want to do that because maybe that column is useful later. So we prevent this, uh, this dropping. We also uh, provide a patch for not crashing when a view is not correct because this cra uh, these views are going to be uh, remove later if proceeding, or m meanwhile, you only get an info uh, message about this. We also silence several unconvenient logs for not having something to analyze on your migration very big. So this is another patch we apply. Uh, 
uh, we also apply um, a recursive strategy for continuing installing modules until everything is, is done. So this is something that, if not provided, uh, will require you to, uh, um, to run several times the same update. And the last one is to commit after each module is completed for having the ability to resume the migration where it uh, before it crashes on, on something. So it's very useful for not having long migration that uh, crashes at the end because a condition is not correct and then uh, needed to start from the beginning. That's uh, very annoying. So there are more patches, but this, uh, these are the, the most relevant one. And finally, on the Open Upgrade project, we have the scripts. The scripts is called as the code we are executing and the, mm, the things we have to do for providing these changes. So uh, we are taking the, the files we have, mm, uh, we have filled with the other tool for taking it as base for creating these scripts. So we analyze each line of this file and deduce if we have to do anything or not. And if we have to do anything, we uh, provide the code for doing that change. It also, uh, it not, it's not only consisting on analyzing this file. Sometimes there are change of behaviors that are not reflected on the database itself. But we need to know functionally, uh, functionally how it works on the previous version and how it works now on this version. So you can imagine that this is not easy, but it's also uh, the, the most, uh, the most um, methodol uh, methodic way of knowing each of the changes you, you have on, your, uh, on the new version. Uh, and this is what takes more, more time on the Open Upgrade project. Uh, it's very easy to, to provide the files and the tools are already there, but the time we spend on the Open Upgrade is creating these uh, scripts for each module. Uh, it's very atomic, one module uh, provided with the scripts, the, uh, the database that has this module installed will be able to, uh, to migrate. If there is no script for, uh, for this module, uh, let's see later on, on the FAQ uh, section about that. Hmm. More things. Uh, mm -mm -mm. Okay, that's, that's already said, that it follows the migration machinery uh, structure, the folder migration, the target version, and so on. And this is already prepared by, um, by the, um, the module upgrade analysis. So on the Odoo core modules, we don't have to, to do this by hand. And uh, this is also another chain in version 14 because Odoo has provided in the migration machinery a command line argument for not having to the, the, the obligation to be inside the same module, the, the migrations folder. We can provide this argument and we can have the, the migration scripts in other, in other site, in other place. <laughs> This is an example, uh, again, a small example for illustration purposes of one, uh, one script. We have a main method that is called migrate that is run by the migration machinery. Decor uh, decorated this, uh, and this method with the decorator openupgrade.migrate. With this, uh, we are providing an already prepared environment if we need to, to do any ORN operation. The same we, we do on our regular modules. Uh, it can be done here with that decorator. So mm, you will find always on my open upgrade migrations this decorator because it is uh, the, the way to, uh, to have that environment. And the rest is calling several open upgrade lead methods or do anything on your own code. For example, here we can check if the table exists on the database, and if so, then do conditional code. We can complicate what we want, these migration scripts, depending on the things we, we have to do. Uh, well, finally, 
uh, uh, um, this is an overview, of course. Um, I, I don't have too much time for uh, for uh, um, expanding this. And I, I was thinking about doing a migration in life, but the time I, I have is not enough. But don't worry. <laughs> it's uh, uh, on the Open Upgrade project. There is a discussion um, discussion section that you can go ask and so on. And there are several people that can. Can, uh, can answer you, but let's uh, mm, let's uh, try several questions that people ask me, and it's very common to, to have these these doubts. When you want to migrate between several versions, you are on version A, for example, and you want to go to version 13, version 14. Uh, but the usual question is, do I have to migrate uh, um, through each version? And um, unfortunately, the, the answer is yes, or in this case, the, the question is, uh, is done uh, on, on the reverse, I think, yeah, exactly. Uh, is no, that it can be in one step. You have to go through each version. Why? Because if not, you will need to provide scripts for, uh, for each combination of a uh, source version and target version. Mm, imagine uh, you, have, uh, you are on version uh, A and you want to migrate to the version 13. Uh, you have to analyze both versions to see the differences and create a scripts for that set of changes. <laughs> but if migrating not to version 13, uh, but version 14, you will need to provide the same, uh, to analyze the same changes and to provide that scripts. So the way to avoid this and be manageable is to migrate per each version and provide the changes on each version. Sometimes we have found that uh, we migrate to one version, there is a change, and on the next version is reverse, as said on the data structures. But this is automatically performed by the scripts itself. So we have to go uh, there. Don't, don't <laughs> delay too much the migration, and you don't have to jump between several versions. But no, there's, uh, it's not a problem in set, uh, itself because you don't have to provide your customs module for each version. This is another usual question. Hey, I have to, if I'm migrating from version N to version 13, I have to migrate my modules to version 9, version 10, version 11? No. You only have to uh, um, perform the changes on your code for the target version, the last one. And in the middle uh, versions, in between versions, you only have to run the scripts for doing the changes. But don't forget, please, to include all the existing OCA modules on this intermediate step. Why? Because on the OCA modules, there are also migration scripts provided for open upgrade. So, uh, providing these modules on your environment, on your add-ons path, the changes needed for getting to the target version will be also done, apart from the Odoo core ones. Another uh, usual question. Uh, if not all the module scripts are ready, can I migrate? Well, in the best case, maybe the module that uh, is installed on your database is not covered yet, but because nobody has analyzed if there is any change or not. But there is no change, so no problem. You migrate and no error and everything OK. This is the best case. The, on an intermediate uh, case, maybe uh, there, there are ch changes to be done. This hasn't been analyzed, but you get to the end uh, migrating. No, no crash, no error, the migration is performed, but beware, maybe not all the, all the data is in the expected uh, set. So uh, take care about this and take into account that doing that, mm -hmm. maybe it's not, uh, you are not getting a final uh, good result. How good or how bad? It depends on the, uh, on the case. And on the worst case, your uh, database, uh, your migration process is uh, crashes 
because not everything is adapted, and so you get to, to an error condition. I have to say that not everything that leads to a crash is due to this. Maybe you have your data also in a bad shape. Why? Because uh, another thing that happens across a new version is that some constraints uh, have changed across time. So on your previous version database, uh, these constraints are not enforced, and when coming to the uh, target version, this is uh, enforced, and you get that some of the records doesn't comply, uh, don't comply with this, uh, with this constraint. Examples of this, on version 8, you create a sales order, and you put a product and a unit of measure. You confirm the sales order, and this produces the, the picking and the invoice. And you freely change the, the product and the unit of measure of the invoice or the picking. This is perfectable, suitable on version 8. Odoo allows to do that, but when migrating to version 9, you get that when computing the quantity reside for the liver or the quantity invoice, you get an error because there, is, there are incompatible unit of measures. So this is a condition that Open Upgrade can handle. You have to change the things before migrating for having this uh, in a good condition. So cleaning the database is also very important, not only uh, migrating, but in general, but preparing for migrating, uh, you need to, to perform this thing. This can be a trial error. You try, and if you get an error, then analyze why that error. And probably the error is not due to the scripts, but this condition I'm, I'm talking about. So, as, um, as conclusion of this, migrate as soon as possible, don't live on very, um, very old versions, and you have a good base on Open Arcade for helping you this. But there is some of the work you have to do on this. This is not a plug and play thing, because all these things I'm talking about. And uh, if you want to contribute to this, it's very, um, how to say it, it's uh, a very satisfying task when you see the, uh, the circle uh, is closed, seeing why something has changed, and um, uh, tracing the, this chain of the database layout to what motivates this chain. Okay. So, by my part, this is all. And I don't know how uh, on time, a bit, a bit late. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Qualche so minuto per le domande, se c'è cioè Adriano, domande non ce ne hai adesso? No. <laughs> Scherzo, vai Andrea. Uh, last question, last point to make an update, a SQL update for the unit of measure. Uh, how can you do it? You use scripts? Uh, how can kind of... Uh, when I find this problem, well, the, the question is, uh, for the sample I had put, uh, how I proceed with that. And mm, on that case, I see for each record what is the, the, main, uh, the main product and unit of measure they want to, to put. And this is, um, some, um, for the most of the times, the invoice one. If you have modified the invoice, it's because uh, that one is the final one you want to use. So I modify the sales order line and the picking lines for matching the product and the uh, unit of measure of the invoice lines. But that's uh, a case per case that you have to analyze. Yes, hmm. Using what? Uh, uh, well, I usually use SQL for getting the, the conflicting lines, mm. doing uh, some joins on sales order line, following the, the link to the invoice lines, and comparing uh, this unit of measure, or not only the unit of measure, but the product category, the product unit of measure category. With this, I have the IDs, then I go to do it cell and, and see, and using the cell uh, or using an update SQL, I modify the, the data. But this depends also on the problem itself and how to, to attack this. Usual tools, SQL, uh, shell commands, 
I don't know if you know what is the cell. Uh, you can start an interactive cell for uh, providing uh, interactive commands with the ORM syntax. So this is very useful for yeah. doing yeah. Uh, doing operations on 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 the run. We can do a lot of things with the Odoo shell. Yeah, exactly. Uh, Antonio. <laughs> the same uh, DB user from N and N minus one version? R requires what? The, the migration pro process uh, yeah. uh, convert the, uh, the, da the data, the SQL. Uh, I, I tried the, the open update. And I, I saw it run uh, some SQL uh, yeah. script. <laughs> but this process required the same DB user. DB user. Uh, ah, okay. Mm, that that dep uh, depends on the on the deployment. Uh, he is asking about if the um, upgrade process requires to to have the same user that you are running on the or do itself. Well, first of all, don't work on the production database. Do a copy and uh, don't, don't have on parallel the do working and running with the try of the test of the migration. But depending on the deploy uh, technique, you will need an extra user or the most common thing is to use the same. You have already provided a DB user that has all the grants, so why change it this? Of course, we need all the grants, the same that you need for running Odoo. So if you are, for example, running Dutba, that is our deployment uh, way, you have to, uh, to run the same update all s sentence that you would, uh, you would make for your running environment. And this is run with the Odoo DB user, that is the, the usual convention name. So um, not sure if this is the problem you, uh, you have or it's another derived from the way you, you dump or restore the database. Um, if you have a problem, put an issue or put a discussion in the project and maybe we can check. Okay. Thank you, Pedro. <laughs> you are welcome. Okay.